Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets from an intermarket analysis perspective, as always. This is an end of day video on Thursday, 14th of April 2016. Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com and uh, download the latest app on the Google Play and App Store and gain access to my analysis along with others uh, in real time. Okay, now in terms of the markets themselves, uh, another a day, uh, another stellar performance. Mm, not as stellar as you would, I mean, given the fact that the US markets and Asian markets were higher, you would have expected a continuity, but no. Uh, a real follow through, shall we say? Okay, although we did finish more or less flat on the day in terms of the FTSE, uh, given the fact the uh, BOE certainly sounded caution over Brexit and certainly raised some Brexit concerns, uh, you would expect the FTSE to have been flushed, but uh, the oil price certainly remains afloat, hasn't sold off as of uh, thus far, and the German indices certainly uh, enjoying a, a very, very impressive performance going into the close, a 0.6% rally. And the CAC uh, slightly uh, lagging at 0.4%. Okay, let's try and see if we can decipher everything and uh, understand what's happening here. My midday video did explain that uh, the Asian markets were more or less lackluster, get, well, given the fact that the Nikkei certainly was uh, up by 3%, but a lot of that was already factored in. Now, we had uh, inflation data from uh, Europe certainly coming in better than expected, and that certainly negates the argument of more QE. And that should technically have helped the uh, the actual euro USD higher, which in turn should have sent the uh, the actual uh, equity markets lower. Um, that hasn't been the case as far, which has been slightly strange. Okay, uh, along with that we had uh, the uh, BOE also, and uh, like I said, they sounded caution over the uh, potential. Um, uh, although they were f uh, was as expected, but obviously Brexit concerns certainly come into the foray now. Brexit concerns also are in the background as well because nothing really, no real progress has been made there as of yet. Okay, now in terms of US uh, data, we've had uh, the uh, consumer price or CPI data come in slightly weaker than expected, although jobless claims came in stronger and uh, the uh, the new home price index, that's Canada. What was the other piece of information from the US? We had inflation and obviously, yes. So we've had inflation and jobless claims. There was another thread of information, which I can't remember now. Let's have a look. Ah, yes, US real average earnings coming in stronger than expected as well. So that certainly helped the dollar. And obviously uh, we had Mr. Lockhart, although he was uh, slightly dovish at one point, but then he did have... Uh, and uh, also Mr. Powell as well, but he did have subsequent comments that were quite hawkish in nature, which in turn should send the uh, the actual index or keep the indexes under pressure. Okay, now the other alternative, the other uh, variables that should keep them uh, the, uh, are technically considered to be negative for the market uh, is the fact that uh, German growth was lowered, uh, BlackRock, Bank of America, Burberry, Taiwan Semiconductors, and obviously we've had this earthquake in Japan, which which again should uh, trigger off a bout of risk aversion, okay, and keep the markets at bay. Okay, now let's bring up the actual indices and let's see exactly where we stand. Okay, the FTSE 100, let's start off, start off with the FTSE itself. Now the FTSE 100 has it finished with a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, we are consolidating within that bearish engulfing candle, so bear that in mind. And the 10-minute uh, chart does have the p p potential and the possibility of a H&S formation, okay? So therefore, my bias would remain negative on the FTSE itself. And the daily chart as well, you're certainly into that zone at the uh, previous support equals resistance at this zone at 6350, 6360, so looking for further downside there, okay? Right, in terms of the weekly chart, you can see in the FTSE itself, again, you are coming into resistance now. And on the daily chart itself, you, like I said, you have a zone where it is quite important for that to uh, play out. If we, uh, if we take our six three seventy, then obviously the bulls are back in control. But that seems very unlikely. Why? Um, why do I say that? The reason why I say that is because oil. If I bring up a chart of oil, uh, and also copper as well. Obviously, copper has been, uh, remained weak. Now let's just bring up a chart of oil. Okay, oil is certainly holding resistance on the four-hour chart. You can clearly see it there. And the main chart that we need to observe is the sixty-minute chart. So we've had no higher highs in oil, and therefore one would uh, certainly interpret that as being bearish. Okay, so we're looking for further falls there. Also, with regards to the Aussie itself, as you can see, you have this HNS formation on the Aussie at the moment. Um, even though the jobs date was certainly circumspect to a large degree, uh, but at the moment we certainly seem to be consolidating. 
uh, the no higher highs of yet okay you've got your head that's been put in and for now we're just creating this uh, right shoulder looking for a potential thrust lower so that's what the expectations would be with regards to the Aussie USD okay so looking to flush uh, onto the on, on the downside okay and then uh, potential support will be in this zone at 0 0.76660 zone okay so certainly a potential double top on the daily chart of the Aussie which in turn confirms the potential weakness on the FTSE 100 itself same scenario here with regards to the Kiwi as well if I go to the daily chart you can see that we are we've certainly already held double top and looking to potentially break low okay now next index thing that we need to watch is the CAC the CAC as you can see into that gap fill resistance on the daily chart 60 minute chart you obviously have gap fill and you have that horizontal resistance too so certainly keeping a cap on the uh, uh, the actual rally in the French cap 10 minute chart at the moment certainly I was expecting a potential here of a H&S given the left shoulder was here head and obviously looking for a right shoulder that's certainly weak uh, and creates a lower high so you take the pivot high from here connect it to here and uh, that certainly is a scenario there now having said that you can feel, bring up the chart the euro usd you can see that the euro usd had this inverted head and shoulders formation at the moment we haven't put in a uh, new low okay so uh, uh, with regards to the euro usd you can see here we've put in higher lows so far and if the euro starts to move higher from here then obviously that leaves the rest of the eurozone into uh, a bit of a pickle should to say the least Okay, certainly uh, creates a, a risk off environment, a negative environment, and you will see the European equities are uh, certainly suffering. Okay, that certainly is a scenario to watch out for. Okay, now in terms of the German DAX, let's just bring up the German DAX now. The German DAX is a bellwether, very important indices. If I look at the daily chart of the German DAX, you can see that we are into horizontal resistance here. Okay, uh, bringing up a 60 minute chart again. You have a quadruple uh, top potential pattern here, a potential resistance zone, and the daily chart certainly seems to be cont continues to march onward. So let me just uh, add in the pivot points actually here. I don't think I've added the pivot points. One second. Let's see exactly where we are. Okay, so you are coming into R2 resistance. Okay, so certainly expect it to hold. Okay, nevertheless. Okay, so. Interesting scenario, okay. Interesting scenario. You have unfilled gaps left below. Like I said, though, they are all potential target zones, okay. In terms of the uh, the actual German DAX itself, okay. Right. I think that's a wrap up, folks. I am expecting resistance here, especially given the fact that the S and P five hundred is into resistance now, and we also have the uh, the Nasdaq certainly weak as well. Certainly expecting weakness on the Nasdaq. And therefore, that will lead the uh, potential uh, sell-off. So again, U.S. markets will dictate from here. So it will be interesting to see what the outcome there is. So all eyes on the FTSE 100, and you have that bear flag formation. Okay, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Uh, you can um, you can visit w.cfds.com, which is especially spread betting a CFD brokerage, and qualify for that 25% bonus offer. Goodbye now.